I'm back from the Warren Bungles. It's uh, it's been about a week and a half since Warren Bungle National Park. The two previous videos, looking at some of the nature, some of the uh, the walks, they were both done on the fly. Just did the editing and uploading them on my phone. But this one required a little bit of extra time. So I'm back home in the study, and it's all the night photography. So taking a look at the beautiful stars and some of the awesome shots that I was able to get. I should say I am an amateur uh, photographer. Not really, um, they're not the greatest shots out there, I'm sure. So, I mean, for instance, I realized that if I had have used a wider lens, I've got a 12 millimeter here, which would have been quite nice. I might have been able to capture a great deal more, but I was happy with what I could do with what I had. So let's take a look. I'll show you some and talk you through some of what I've got. In terms of why we went to the Warren Bungles or the Warren Bang Bungle National Park, it's one of the renowned places in Australia, but also uh, a little gift that mum gave me um, coming out of COVID as we wanted to do some walks. It talks about it as a must go to place. And the trail that we ended up doing was on the list here. It was a very hot day, um, but the stars, that's what this one's all about, the stars. So here we are with the photos. Um, they are quite large. You can see the first one, terrible photo. You know, this is the very first one that I did, uh, 11th of November, uh, which if I have a look at the little information screen, you can see I did 10 seconds um, at a very high uh, ISO, so, um, you know, a very sensitive sensor going on. Um, and yeah, I didn't get much out of that one. Um, but if I have a look at the next one, all of a sudden we get to see some really beautiful stars. And right over here, if I zoom in here, we will go full screen, that is Jupiter. So the first awesome thing, you can see I've got some chromatic aberration up the top there, but again, uh, just still figuring out the, uh, uh, figuring out my shots at this stage. So that was, um, that was a bit of a change up if I have a look at the information. Um, six seconds only, but, but wide aperture. Because I wanted to get the tent, you know, and there's Chrissy there with the phone uh, light that's trailed a bit there, which is pretty cool. Now the same picture, I decided to do a little bit of work on, try to bring up the stars a bit. Again, I'm very amateur at this kind of stuff, but um, I don't know, maybe this looks nicer, I'm not too sure. Uh, but it's a good shot of our campsite. Uh, Cora's in there at the moment, um, struggling to fall asleep. Uh, there's our big light that we had there, which uh, on the nature video you would have seen, attracted a, a massive huntsman spider, um, which is pretty cool. Oh, just got them back home. Okay, so, then from there, we ended up taking just a, a few shots of the night sky, and you can see, trying to just lift up with some exposure, showing it all the mighty stars that were out there. A big shot there of the, uh, of just just the stars and how many there were, there truly were. It's amazing. Um, but yeah, the first night again was very much just about testing. And you can see here, I spotted something which I wasn't too sure what it was, and as it turns out. It's actually um, the LMC, the Large Magellan Cloud, um, and that'll pop up a few more times as we keep going. So what else did we find? It, yeah, you can see here the rotation of the Earth as we, uh, um, as this, I had the same shot just going for, um, for multiple um, multiple shots. Yeah, it's really stunning. I really love this one because it just shows you how these satellites that come through, they're just reflecting the sun. Like, it's like a strike through a mirror, and you can see there, that's where the maximum reflection from the sun was as it passed um, passed along. And there in the bottom right, again, is, uh, I think that's the LMC, not, not the SMC, the, the large Magellan Cloud. A big cluster of stars, and I think even galaxies in there. Pretty stunning things. Um, another picture there of Jupiter, um, again with the trees, and uh, as you can see I was quite obsessed on the first night with shots of Jupiter, and our campsite there is much darker, um, you can see with uh, Jupiter up there on the top, um, 
shot here of the uh, beautiful gum tree uh, with the stars all behind it. Um, and here, sure, it's uh, it is the toilet block, but it just illuminates everything. I thought that was really stunning to be able to see um, how it gives light out into the trees, which gives some depth and, and gives you an idea of just how majestic things were. Um, in the first night, he, here's the clouds starting to roll in. Uh, I think I've only got a few more shots here of the first night. If I have a look here, in the information, yeah, that's still the 11th, so um, remember it, stay there. Um, and I only did a few more shots on that that evening. Here, another lots of stars out. And I started to zoom in here and adjust the exposure because what I might have got, gotten a shot of here, I'm not too sure whether this is correct or not, but I'm, I'm quite sure we've got little reflections there of the moon, um, the moon there of, of Jupiter. Bit of chromatic aberration on the side there, but it's, uh, that, that's that blue bit that you see there. That's just a, um, what happens with a, with a lens sometimes, um, especially when you're at wide apertures, it can cause some, some of that, um, that issue. But yeah, here, it's probably set right, and you can see, pretty sure those are two moons out there. Um, of Jupiter, so yeah, pretty pretty cool. Uh, at this point as well, it would have been nice if I had a telephoto lens to really zoom in there, but oh well. Um, now here, I'm pretty sure that's the jewel box, a, a tight cluster of different stars. You can see they're all starting to, to sort of make a trail because of the exposure that I had of the shot. But yeah, beautiful, um, beautiful cluster of stars that you can see here with less trail here. There's still a bit of a trail that you can see. And that trail is just caused by the rotation of the Earth um, because even a short period of time for such small dots creates that, that trail. And if I have a look at the information here, you can see that was only in 10 seconds. In the space of 10 seconds, you're already getting a trail of stars. Um, so it does make night photography kind of difficult to really get, um, get, a, get those good shots. Um, and here, yeah, got a, a, a shot that's standing up um, and yeah, you can see lots of beautiful stars, a bit of light there so you can see the trees down the bottom. I'm quite proud of that shot. Jupiter right there in the middle. Still, this is just the first evening. Um, and then yeah, I've done a little bit of work on this one just to show the real darkness that, uh, that, it, that it felt like in that evening. So you can see very, very dark. Another shot just of the stars and here is my final couple of shots of the first evening wanted to get a shot here of just just a rock illuminated with my phone um, and then yeah we've got what I think is the um, is that cluster there that the jewel box and then Jupiter um, floating on top there as it rotates around the earth We're on to now the second evening and as you can see the first shot of each evening is always a little bit out of focus. T takes me a couple just to make sure I got the focus right. Um, let's let's just pause on, on interesting pictures. And on the second evening, I concentrated on the same area. You can even see the tent just down the bottom here as well. And this is the first was it star swipe, I think you call it, um, shot. It's a long exposure that as the Earth rotates, you get these beautiful trails. Star trail shot is probably what it's called. There's lots of noise in this picture, that's what all those purple and green dots are, which happens when you open up uh, a shot for as long as this, which are, this first one was 16 minutes, and then the next one here is 30 minutes. So quite a long period of time that the lens was open. So I could clean this up and make a nice shot, but I've got a good star trail shot coming up. Still on the first evening and just love these shots here that you can see of the trees all lit up again just by the toilet block um, and then all the stars behind it and you can see down the bottom here as well two nights in a row we've got some clouds rolling in but um, that was okay I still got a couple of hours of, of night photography and of star photography before the, the clouds rolled in another beautiful shot where you can see the trees and all the stars and just over here as well that's the, um, the SMC, the Small Magellan Cluster. Here you can see as the clouds are starting to roll in, I just didn't quite get a shot there. 
And just earlier, I think I called it the Small Magellan Cluster. I'm pretty sure it's actually the LMC, this one. We're on to the final night now, and you can see, I love this shot. It just shows, shows you where we are. You can see the trees, and then there's the LMC, the Large Magellan Cluster, right in the middle. Really, you can start to see its shape come through. Again, if I had the right lens with me, I could have got a really close-up shot of it, but I'm quite happy of this shot where you can see it right in the middle of the clearing. This shot I quite like as well, because again, you can see where we are with all the trees, and there's the LMC, Large Magellan Cluster, and just above it, there's the SMC, the Small Magellan Cluster. And with this shot, I've tidied it up a little bit just to really try and show the darkness of the sky and try to bring up, especially the LMC there. The SMC is a little hard to see, there it is, but it is there. And there's the large the LMC. My very first shot on our final night, which just showed that Milky Way which the uh, Indigenous Australians would call the emu. Um, the emu in the sky. Adjusting my exposure to try and get a good shot of it. And here I get my first, what I think is a good shot of our Milky Way, of the, of the emu, but I can do better. So the mountain range that you see here is the Split Rock um, Mountain. I'm not sure if you call them out, or just split rock. And the emu the, uh, that you can see across there, the uh, staring across the Milky Way. And I've done a few shots here because I, I spotted we had some satellites come through. But as the evening progresses, you get less satellites. Reason being, the reflection of the sun at that height of the satellites, it ends up being in shadow, and so you get less and less. But this was a shot looking west, which is where, of course, the sun sets. So you get more here later into the evening. Um, and I was also keeping an eye on what's called astronomical twilight, which is the period of time until you get the darkest of the night, which is when you get some really great uh, night photography. So this was just on the edge of the end of astronomical, astronomical twilight. Adjusting the camera a bit there. And now I've, I take a few shots in a row because I wanted to clear up and get the least amount of satellites to have a really clean photo. But what I love about it is, yeah, there's more uh, satellites whenever we change, but you can start to see again the rotation of the Earth. I like this shot. This is the raw shot from the camera here because you can see down the bottom, this is a car going along the main road, shining some light onto split rock, which gives it a little bit of, um, uh, is character the right word? You can see it, it gives it some texture. I did a little bit, I did a little bit of work on this shot and here you can see more stars have come out as a result. You can see more of it. There is a lot of noise in this photo as well, um, but I did try to push things even further with this shot, which I like so you can visually see a lot, but it does lose a lot of quality as a result of pushing up some of those um, channels in the, in the photo. I've changed direction at this time because I wanted to get another shot of LMC and SMC. And here I get the shot that I wanted, both of them in shot, trees down the bottom, really beautiful photo. Another little cluster of stars here. I wonder whether that might actually be the, uh, the jewel box. Maybe. A zoomed in shot here of the LMC and I wanted to sort of see a bit more of it so in post I pushed it up a bit more. Um, and here you go. It's I think it's I think it's a nice shot. Again, it, you lose a bit of the quality, and it's sort of it's a bit sharper, but you can see a lot more the shape of it. There's much better photos that are out there than this, but I'm quite happy with this one. And 
And a final shot here that I wanted to take, just as a uh, before the the emu, before the uh, Milky Way ducks underneath Split Rock. I've returned to that shot again. You can see it's going down a bit further. And then to finish off, I wanted to do a long exposure and get the star swipe with Split Rock there. And you can see this is the raw photo, and you can even see down here the the, um, the, the signs there at the uh, at the camping site. But finally I did a little bit of work to that shot and we get this, which I'm quite happy with. I think it's uh, it really made for a wonderful shot.